Hey guys, it's Lynn here for Superimpose X and today I'm going to show you how to create two different projects featuring a brand new tool in the app called Lensblur. For the first project, I'm going to go to Photos and select this picture of the Eiffel Tower as the background image. Then I'm going to tap Add Layer, Photo Layer and select this picture as our foreground image. I'm also just going to crop it a little bit to make the masking easier. Then I'm gonna go to mask and select the smart brush, which is the masking tool that I want to use for this image, but you can choose any of the tools that you want. Now that we have our masked out foreground, I'm gonna go to transform and position him where I want him to stand in the photo. Next, it's time to color grade the foreground to make it blend better with the background. So with the foreground layer selected, I'm gonna tap filter and choose balance. Here you can play around with the color tones to make them match the colors in the background. I'm also going to go into basic to adjust the brightness and contrast in the picture. Now it's time to blur the background using the new lens blur tool. Select the background layer by tapping on it, go to editor and tools. Previously, if you wanted to blur the background, you had to use the focus tool. As you can see, it creates a very smooth blur, which looks nice in some cases, but it's not really what a real lens out of focus blur looks like. Lens blur, on the other hand, creates the type of blurred look that a real camera with a low aperture does, sometimes called a bokeh effect. For this image, I want the whole background to be blurry, so I'm gonna move these lines all the way down, or perhaps just leave them slightly above the edge right there. So as you can see, it creates a really nice natural looking blur and we can actually even customize the look of the blur if we want. Here in the bokeh tab, we can choose which shape we want to use for the blur. There are tons of fun shapes to play around with. But for this image, I'm gonna go with S3, which is the hexagon shape. We also have blur where we can control how blurry we want the effect to be. And then in lights, we can choose how intensely we want the lights to glow or how strong we want the bokeh effect to be. We have two other features too, image and shape, but let's wait with those until the next project that I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. Once you're happy with the effect, tap the check button. As a finishing touch for this image, I'm going to use the light drop tool. Tap the foreground to select that layer, go to layers and choose light wrap. If you want to learn more about this tool, we have a whole separate tutorial dedicated to light wrap, so make sure to go check that one out too. Here's what the image looked like before adding the color grading, lens blur, and light wrap. And this is what it looks like after. Now let's move on to the second project. In this one, we already have the background and foreground ready, but we want the foreground to stand out more by blurring the background. The first thing we need to do is mask out the foreground. Go to mask and choose the masking tool of your choice. Once the mask is ready, go to Editor, Tools, and Lens Blur. In this case, we don't want to blur this masked area. Instead, we want to blur the background that we masked out. To do that, go to Image, and choose Background. This feature will show and blur the unmasked area. The last feature is Shape. The default shape are these two lines that will blur the whole area above them. This next one lets you blur a straight area anywhere in the picture, since it blurs both above and below the lines. And then we also have these two round shapes that let us either blur everything outside the round shape or only the area inside the circle. For this project, I'm going to choose the second one so that I can blur both the top and bottom of the image. Then I'm just going to adjust the lights and blur a little bit. And then it's ready. Here's the before, and here's the after. That's all for this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out our other tutorials for Superimpose X, and if you have any questions at all, you're always welcome to send us an email through the Contact Us option inside the app so that we can help you out from there. Bye!